Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yeah, and I hope you lot are doing well, and welcome back to another Chelsea news video today. Today, we're going to be talking about Chelsea's January probable deadline day business attempt. Chelsea's new shirt sponsor, I haven't commented on this yet, but I want to um, express my opinion on the new shirt sponsor. And Chelsea have drawn either Shrewsbury Town or Liverpool Football Club in the next round of the FA Cup. What does that mean? Can Frank Lampard win it? How does Klopp's FA Cup stance affect this tie? But before we do get into today's content, the quick reminder to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so, please do sub, hit that bell notifications icon, why not like the video to help me out? Alright, let's get into it. I tell you what, let's start with the shirt sponsor. I know this is like modern day football at its best and it's all monetary and marketing stuff but if you like football kits generally you're interested in sponsors how they're going to affect the aesthetic of the kit um obviously i um, imagine a lot of people would prefer no sponsors just like the fa cup kit that chelsea recently released i got one of those myself very nice but a good sponsor can almost i don't want to say help the look because it definitely can't but it adds to the vibe so it's important so when chelsea were looking for a new sponsor people were speculating that they might wait till the summer before they sign a deal because if they secure champions league football they'd probably get a better deal out of their sponsors more monetary value but perhaps when they have re had recent wobbles and unsure they're going to sign someone, maybe they figured, all right, it's best to just sign a deal now when it looks like we can still generally get into the Champions League, although we're not 100% sure. So Chelsea have signed a three-year deal with mobile phone network free. A lot of frees going on there. I mean, if it's going to be that number free on this, you know what, I'm going to throw up a couple of concepts on the screen now. What do you guys think? I think it should be changed to the word three. Because then it won't look as bad as that. I mean, at first I thought, oh, it might work. You know, almost like the number three might be better than a word, like an emblem on the center of the chest. It might look kind of cool, but I don't think I like it. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this sponsor. Do you think it looks good? or are you against it? Get down there. All right, before we talk about Chelsea's historical deadline day business, let's talk about the FA Cup. Now, as I'm sure you know, Chelsea squeezed through against Hull a 2-1 away win, but to be honest, it probably should have been 2-0 if, if not for that weird Kovacic mistake when he turned and kicked the ball into the net. So whatever, they're through, although that sort of game really highlighted Chelsea's frailties throughout the season, but they're through and they've drawn either Shrewsbury Town or Liverpool Football Club, depending on whoever wins that replay. Now, when people see Liverpool, they think, oh God, champions elect, champions of Europe, club football champions of the world. This is the last thing we need in, <laughs> in a competition that Frank Lampard should be looking to win, hopefully, maybe. But I'm sure you've all seen in the media, Jurgen Klopp hates the fact how there's a replay and he refuses to play the replay at Anfield. He's sending out the kids and the kids coach, which in many ways I think is a bad look for Liverpool because firstly, I kind of get it right. He was The Premier League told him not to host any friendlies in the winter break to honour it and not play any games, yet they have to go and play this game. I get that how that how that could annoy him, right? So I think maybe if these players are trying to win the Champions League, they're trying to win the Premier League, they're knackered, they've played loads of games, fine, don't play your first team. Say, look, right, you, I promised you rest, have a rest, this isn't our priority. But Jurgen Kopp, he's not running around, he's the face of Liverpool Football Club. In my opinion, he should go and respect the FA Cup, be the face of Anfield, of Liverpool, and be present and it's kind of disrespectful to Shrewsbury to not do that so I understand where he's coming from but I think it's a bit silly what he's doing anyway so he's gonna send the kids out which makes you think wow Shrewsbury Town can win and then Chelsea will have a home draw against Shrewsbury Town well maybe at the end of the day Jurgen Klopp sent out a rotated side away at Shrewsbury but before that the end, he had Salah, Firmino, Oxlade Chamberlain, Fabinho, maybe Lallana. He had a bunch of first teamers on the pitch who still struggled and couldn't get over the line for the win. You would imagine Salah and Firmino will be rested in this game, so it will literally be the kids. But at Anfield, with the Liverpool fans behind him, to be honest, they'd probably still be favourites to beat Shrewsbury Town. But let's just say Shrewsbury Town win, that's great for Chelsea, they get a the favourable draw. But if Liverpool win, what does that mean? Does 
Klopp bring his full strength Liverpool to Stamford Bridge because like you cannot sit if they get through that with the kids I can just see him bringing the full strength Liverpool to Stamford Bridge and that sucks <laughs> Chelsea can still beat Liverpool at home Chelsea on their day can mix it with the best in the world it just has to be their day and they have to push over the line a little bit further to actually you know they lost 2-1 to Liverpool at home but in many Passages of play in that game, Chelsea are actually better than Liverpool, so I back them, but it'll be nice if they play Shrewsbury. Now, can Frank Lampard win the FA Cup? I'm gonna say yes. To be honest, if they get past this tie, you're really only thinking of Manchester City as the biggest, most dangerous stumbling block, understandably, as the holders as well. Especially now they know they're not winning the Premier League, he will absolutely try and retain both the League Cup and the FA Cup to have a good season and obviously stay in the top four. Because the bar has been set that high for Manchester City. But the thing is, I've said this before and I'm gonna repeat myself, Frank Lampard, although he's a developing young coach, he'll be the first to admit that in many ways he's learning on the job. But he does have something already in his locker as a coach that's very, very promising. And that's, I think, this inspirational way of getting into the players' heads. Much like Zinedine Zidane at Real Madrid. <laughs> I can't stop saying it like that. So Frank Lampard, right, he did well with Derby in tournament football. He obviously, they were the better team against us. I was at that game at Stamford Bridge, knocked out Manchester United at Old Trafford. And even at the playoffs in the championship, got to the final. This is all like tournament-esque football. I think he's good at inspiring and coaching through tournaments. And I think that could actually translate to the FA Cup. So with that, if Frank Lampard does get a signing this window, more on that in a moment. And the way he coaches players and inspires players, I think Chelsea do have a good chance of winning the FA Cup. I actually think they're third favourites after Liverpool and City. Granted, the odds drop off quite far after those first two, but Chelsea are in the mix. And certainly if they get through this next round, if Shrewsbury do beat the Liverpool kids, then who knows, maybe Chelsea will immediately become close second favourites and have a chance in this competition. Right, let's talk about transfers then, I suppose. Now, everyone's annoyed with the state of play in terms of Chelsea's transfer business. Understandably, there's been players linked and Chelsea are talking to agents and players and stuff, they had made contact with Moussa Dembele, they had been in Paris negotiating for Edison Cavani, who looks like he will go to Madrid now, and they are in contact with uh, Piatek's agent who's been apparently offered to Chelsea, who in my opinion would be a good signing, but also a lot of people online and social media are saying, and I'm sort of inclined to agree, that Luka Jovic would be the best option for Chelsea on a six month loan. Very, very low risk in terms of investment. He can just see Chelsea out to the summer where they can properly address their transfer business. And Luka Jovic is obviously a very talented player who's not getting any time at Real Madrid, who probably would be okay coming to Chelsea. And Chelsea do have an open relationship with Real Madrid now. You know, Re, Eden Hazard, Courtois, Mateo Kovacic, they're doing deals often, so they've got an open line of communication. Luka Jovic would make sense. Now, Matt Law's reported on this, like Piatek and Jovic. I think the most likely in terms of the contact and the links is um, Christoph Piatek at the moment, not Luka, Jovic, not Luka Jovic, if I can speak. So I'm kind of inclined to agree with people on Twitter. I think Jovic would be the most sensible option if it is an option. But I'm not sure it is an option. Obviously, when there is news in terms of transfers or updates on situations, I will of course make a video and present it to you guys to give you guys the information. But I want to talk about deadline day in Chelsea in general. People are thinking, right, Chelsea are cooks, they won't make a signing. But the truth is, Chelsea are one of these clubs that do leave their business late for right or for wrong. I mean, I don't understand it. I don't suppose any of you guys understand it but they do love a deadline day signing. Obviously, they've had loads of unsuccessful deadline day signings, but they've had loads of successful ones too. Loads of defensive ones, I think, as well, like Gary Cahill and David Luiz were originally bought on the, in January, and maybe on deadline day. I think we're talking about, I was tweeting about January transfers, successful January transfers, David Luiz, Gary Cahill. Uh, Vanovic was bought in January, but Chelsea buy players on deadline day as well, like obviously under Conte, Marcus Alonso and David Luiz came on deadline day very, very late. Look at those two players were integral in the Premier League win. 
So Chelsea like doing business late, it can happen. I think they see value in doing this, in forcing a club's hand. Very, very risky technique if you ask me, and one that could definitely backfire on you, especially by doing business late in the window. You just give a player less time to train with the team and integrate with the squad and learn under the coach. So, I mean, I'm not gonna to pretend to understand the theory. I reckon it is financial. They just try and get a cheaper deal by leaving it really, really late. But it does stress out football fan bases. One thing we do know is Frank Lampard is gagging for a centre forward. He's come out and said so many things in the media now, essentially crying out for forwards, players to finish off chances. Sky Sports or Sky Bet recently um, uh, published that graphic about the XG table. I'm going to put that on the screen now for your interest. I think the way this works is Chelsea had, it had, had every team in the Premier League converted their normal XG. That was, this is what the table would look like. So Chelsea would be comfortably third, a point off joint second actually, and it just shows you that they're massively underachieving and underperforming in regards to their XG. Frank Lampard, who's actually come out and said he's generally not a fan of the XG model, has even used this in his defense with the caveat of, I'm not usually into this, but look at this. Basically a way of quantifying that Chelsea are not taking their chances. So yeah, they need a striker big time. Whether it's Christoph Piotrek, Luka Jovic, or someone else that Chelsea are talking to behind the scenes, they'll be, or Frank Lampard will certainly be pushing very, very hard. Like I said, if something comes up, I'll make a video and I'll give you guys the information and news, so make sure you're constantly swinging by and stopping by Football Therapy. But if you have enjoyed the content today, guys, please do like this video. Please remember to subscribe if you are indeed new to the channel. Also, you're welcome to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Come check me out on Instagram, nearly on a thousand followers at Football Yannick. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.